and welcome to another edition of the Hobbit Cast. I'm your host, Ben McDonald, and today, instead of doing our normal fireside chat, we're going to do a Keto Quick Start. This is our episode that's going to be time compressed to give you just the information you need to learn about the ketogenic diet and what you need to know. Today, I am joined by my special host, Karen, the first of her name, Queen of Keto, Queen of the Fathead, and the Crackslaw and the Mug Muffins. Lady of the Net Carbs, Protector of the Healthy Fats, Khaleesi of the Great Kale Sea, called Karen Ketosis, the Uncarbed Mother of Fred. Karen, how are you doing? I'm great. I am thrilled that I'm I'm finally getting the recognition that I deserve. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> the best introduction I've ever had. Nice. <laughs> well, today, Karen, uh, we've been informed that we blow hard and we blow for far too long sometimes. So yeah. Today, we're going to put keto in a thimble. That's right. Nice and quick and fast and just get the essential information out there. Right. So if you're listening to this podcast, uh, you are probably very, very new to keto. And this is going to equip you with everything you need to know about what the diet is, what it is not, and how to prepare yourself for getting on with uh, step one, two, and three of the ketogenic diet. So with that, uh, let me kick it off by talking about what the ketogenic diet is. Uh, for most people, the food that they're eating is going to be carbohydrate based. That's basically sugar. So you're a sugar burning machine. Uh, that That's pretty good and it, it works well because sugar is a readily available energy source. The, the problem is you may be looking to lose a little bit of weight. And if you look down at your midsection, what you'll find is that around the midsection, you have stored a certain amount of material. That material is made out of fat. So your body stores energy in the form of fat. Now, here's what's neat. The ketogenic diet is actually going to retrain your body to use fat as fuel rather than sugar. This is going to give you all sorts of interesting adaptations. It, it's kind of a gimmick, really, when you think about it. Because we're going to pull all the sugar out of your diet so that you're eating mostly fats and protein. And that's going to give you the ability to mobilize the fat that you've stored preferentially and without pain. This is obviously uh, an interesting thing if you're trying to lose excess fat. If you can convert your body into a fat burning machine rather than a sugar burning machine. Karen, why don't you talk a little bit about the appetite suppression? Oh, that's right. This is why the ketogenic diet is superior to your more traditional high carb, low fat, uh, calorie restriction diet. The ketogenic, because you are burning fat as fuel, it offers you appetite suppression. This means you're not going to have those sudden surges of energy and then crashes that you get when you're when you're consuming primarily carbohydrates as your energy source. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to have those moments where you're, you're hungry and you're thinking about when you can have your next meal and how many calories or points you have left. You're not going to be walking in and out of the kitchen, looking in the fridge every half mm -hmm. hour just to make sure that the food is still there. Sometimes you won't even be thinking about food because you've utilized your own fat as an energy source. That's right. The, the fat is abundant and available at all times. You're sitting on it right now. <laughs> I am. <laughs> so, Karen, uh, let's talk about what a low-carb, high-fat, medium-protein diet looks like. W what does a typical ketogenic lunch look like on a plate? So, for lunch, uh, in the summer, what I like to have is a salad. So, it would be your almost your typical salad that you would have in a, uh, a, a high carb, low fat diet, but this one's a little different. So this, you have your leafy green vegetables, maybe some low carb uh, vegetables as well. So these are non-starchy vegetables like celery or broccoli. Mm -hmm. And you have some meat. It could be a little bit of leftover steak. It could be chicken breast. And then you would have added fat so a dressing like an oily vinaigrette made with olive oil maybe some ranch maybe you've got a little cheese sprinkled on top just hold on did you say ranch ranch you can have ranch dressing high fat dairy nice i'm in <laughs> sold hmm. <laughs> okay so we we'll talk about dinner a little bit what, what what's that dinner gonna look like 
So at dinner, you would have a, a piece of good protein. So you might have a couple of pieces of chicken. You would mm -hmm. have it with that crispy skin still on. Mm -hmm. So it would be nice and yummy. And then you would have a uh, non-starchy vegetable. So we're talking your cauliflower, your broccoli, uh, your green beans. If you stick to the ones that, uh, that aren't starchy, you, uh, you won't go wrong. And then you'd have a little green salad also with a little bit of added fat on your broccoli. You could put cheese again if you wanted because that's one of those high fat dairy. Not, there will be none of this no fat cheese in this diet. None of that. Nobody wants to eat that plasticky stuff. So this sounds like it's uh, definitely contrasted from some of the other diets that are out there like Weight Watchers or South Beach in that we're very focused on uh, getting that high fat as opposed to a, a moderate or low fat diet. That's right. And there's a lot of whole foods. There's nothing that is going to be packaged and produced and marketed towards you to get you to spend more money on a particular mm -hmm. program. This is just basic foods. You've got your meats, you've got your non-starchy veggies, you've got your leafy greens, you've got your high fat dairy. Nice. So that sounds uh, well and good, but the problem with all these uh, meat and cheeses and dairy is you got to keep that stuff cold, right? So what do I do for lunch at work? Oh, that's pretty easy. You just get an insulated lunch bag that has one of those little ice packs in there and you can keep hard boiled eggs. Mm. Nuts are always very portable. You can have nuts in small quantities because they're a nice uh, source of fat and a little bit of protein. Yep. Uh, and then you can keep all your wonderful veggies and dip in there too, a little bit of cheese and you've got your lunch packed. Basically, you should just be sticking to simple foods when you first start out. Don't try to make things too complicated. And if you don't like packing your lunch, some people don't. Some people like to go out. There's plenty of options at fast food restaurants. I like to get the grilled chicken uh, Caesar salad that's got, you know, mixed greens, a little bit of Parmesan cheese, mm -hmm. and I just skip the croutons. And I might take it easy if the uh, dressing has a little bit of little bit of carbohydrate in it. Sure. Uh, you know, for me, I, I like the uh, bunless cheeseburger. You go for that. It, <laughs> a lot of places now, if you tell them that you're eating low carb, you can ask for a lettuce wrapped cheeseburger. Yeah. And they'll take a whole bunch of lettuce and build like a little burrito out of it and stick the hamburger on the inside. They will do that. And, you know, if you're going out for dinner with the family, there's always options. A steakhouse is a good place to go. Mm -hmm. uh, and either rotisserie chicken places are good. Uh, you just basically want to get a piece of meat that doesn't have any sort of sauce on it, a little mm -hmm. bit of dry spice, and then you can ask for extra veggies. Just make sure that they are the ones that are low carb, no carrots, no potato. And put a little butter on it, and you're good. Okay, so let's talk about what you need to do. I, I'm sold. You get, I get to have ranch on my salads. I get to have hmm. steak and hamburgers and all the and good butter things. And, that sounds yeah. great. Bacon and eggs, all those I, wonderful things. I'm in. So how do I get started? What's the first thing I need to do? The first thing you need to do is you need to anticipate that there are going to be cravings for sugary, starchy, junky foods. Like any other diet, there is a little bit of a, a period of adjustment. Mm-hmm. So the first thing I want you to do is to open up your pantry, get a cardboard box, and throw out all the junk. So <laughs> your cake mixes, your potato chips, your you know bags of pasta, yep. any of that stuff that you're not going to eat. You just pack that up, and your local food bank can be the benefactor of that. They will they will thank you for it. Just make sure that they aren't there to tempt you in a moment of weakness. Yeah, I think that's really such a key point is that the, the biggest change for a lot of people is when you start pulling away these no sugars, no grains, uh, there's a little bit of a withdrawal from carbohydrates. You start getting the cravings for cereal and cravings for Danish and ice cream mm -hmm. and all, all those things. I mean, he, I remember somebody was telling me they had a craving for rice aroni. <laughs> Which, you know, it, that that was a childhood comfort food for them. So that was a big deal. They, you had to get rid of it because if it's there, uh, during those first week or so, it, it's as much of a psychological change as it is a physiological change. 
That's right. And, you know, there are lots of substitutions for those foods, but for the first month, you just want to focus on changing your taste buds a wee bit so you're not craving those foods. So it's just, you know, a little, a little bit of suffering <laughs> the, mm -hmm. first, the first couple of weeks and the cravings go away and then you can start indulging a little bit. And it's kind of crazy too, when you start cutting out all those sugars out of your diet, you find out that there's actually a lot of sugar in natural foods and these things start mm -hmm. tasting very differently. By the end of that first month, you're going to be able to taste heavy whipping cream and go, wow, this is like really, I can sweeten coffee with heavy whipping cream and it makes very it taste true. sweet because yeah. there's plenty of sugar in there. You just aren't used to tasting it because you're normally getting pounded a teaspoon at a time with it. Yeah, and you, you just need to give your body and your taste buds that break so that you can actually start to taste food how it really does taste again. So you can you can enjoy those foods once more. That's part of the joys of this diet is that the food does taste good. <laughs> yes, it does. Okay, so let's figure out what food we need to go buy. So let's go to the grocery yeah. store. Well, the pantry's empty, so we got to go shopping, right? That's right. All right, now when you go into the grocery store... You want to shop the outer rim. Correct. So you want to stock up on your leafy greens mm -hmm. and your non-starchy veggies. Yes. I like, you know, celery, broccoli, cauliflower, green beans. We do a lot of that. Anything that's little, green that grows yeah. above the ground is pretty much fair game. That's right. Root vegetables are out for now. Yeah. yeah so, and then you want to make the mad dash past the bakery <laughs> and then get your your meats and your eggs and your bacon. Yep. If that's the nice thing about this this first month is that you get to eat your bacon. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> and then you, you get your high fat dairy, you get your cooking oils, olive oil, coconut oil, whatever you prefer to cook with. Mm -hmm. And for me, sometimes veggies are out of season, so I will buy the frozen ones. The frozen ones, they keep longer. You don't have to pitch them out at the end of the week if you haven't used them. And uh, oftentimes during the winter months, they're just so much more affordable. Right, because here's what you may not know about how uh, the world works. When they pick those things that they're planning on uh, freezing into a bag, like they, those things are frozen within like six hours of being picked. Like that, mm -hmm. that is an on-site freezing process. So a lot of times frozen vegetables are way fresher than anything you're getting in a grocery store. Yeah. All right. So it sounds like uh, we're going to get our veggies, get our meat, get our, our, our dairy and fats so that we have stuff to cook with. Yep. There's another piece of this that we really need to prepare for. And that is a, a ketogenic diet is lightly diuretic. That, that means it makes you pee a little bit more. <laughs> It does so, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> just, just enough, you won't notice it, but the, the amount of fluid coming out is going to be a little bit more. And unfortunately, it's going to suck out some of the uh, key electrolytes in your body. We're talking about <laughs> salt and magnesium especially. Yeah. So what happens is if you don't supplement that extra salt, you'll start to feel like really tired of fatigue almost. You'll get headaches. And what really gets people is by about the third or fourth day, you'll start getting wacky leg cramps at 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. So what we need you to do is to put in some salt into everything that you eat and uh, also supplement with magnesium. So a good rule of thumb is to take one and a half teaspoons of salt, just regular table salt, put it in a tiny little dish first thing in the morning, sprinkle it on all your food, put a little bit in some water maybe, and just make that dish disappear every day. That's going to give you about 2,500 milligrams of sodium, and that's yeah. the right amount. For magnesium, we're looking for you to supplement uh, any form of magnesium other than oxide. Oxide is terrible. It just doesn't work. Don't worry about why. So look for uh, malate is one we really like. Uh, glycinate is good. Uh, citrate is also fine. And whatever you can find, as long yeah. as it's not oxide. And you're wanting about 400 to 600 milligrams a day. So you'll need to find those. And we can give you some links to, uh, to get those off Amazon if you can't find them in your local drugstore. They're very cheap supplements, though. You're talking about two bucks a month worth of pills here. These are not yeah. uh, pricey things. No, and for the salt, you can have any type of salt you want. It could be table salt. It could be kosher salt. It could be pink salt. Whatever you sure. find more, more palatable.
And there are other sources of salt besides salt, such as chicken cubes, those little chicken <laughs> bouillon cubes that your mom used to make terrible soup. You yep. can throw one of those in a mug of hot water and drink it like coffee. And it's darn delicious because guess yeah. what? Your taste buds are wide awake now because you're not pounding them with sugar. You'd be surprised <laughs> how good chicken broth tastes in a, in a hot mug. So there are some ways of getting salt uh, other than just table salt. Uh, there's also some pills you can get if you need to. And of course, uh, you know, things like bacon have lots of salt in them. Uh, naturally fermented pickles, sauerkraut, things like that are going to have lots of salt too. So there, there's a that? lot of choices to get that salt in, but it's really important to avoid those like cramps and the fatigue mm -hmm. that comes with uh, salt depletion. Yeah. You hear that everyone? You can have bacon. That's right. That's, that's the most important thing to remember out of <laughs> anything that we say. You get to eat bacon. <laughs> that's right. Bacon is a condiment. All right, Karen, uh, you're going to need some measuring tools here, right? Uh, why don't you go ahead and talk about this part? That's right. You're going to need a few things. Uh, the first thing you're going to need is to get a macro calculator done. We have one that is uh, part of our, our Facebook group, the Ketogenic Open Discussion. It's a link to our friend Scott's blog page called shecallsmehotlit.com. Um, so with this, it's real easy. It does all the calculating for you. All you have to do is just plug in your sex, your age, your height, your weight, and it will tell you what you should be eating. So macros, the short for macronutrients, is going to tell you how many calories you're going to be eating. So calories are just units of energy, and those units of energy, they're going to be broken up to, into your, oh, your protein. So that's going to be like your meat and your dairy and nuts and your fats. Now with your fats, there's a limit. This is a high fat diet, but you don't need to eat all the fat. And uh, especially during induction, so that's the first two to four weeks, your total carbs should be under 20 grams. That is the most important piece of this, is keeping those carbohydrates below 20 grams during induction. That's right. And that's when you'll reap all the wonderful benefits. You'll, you'll be into ketosis and you'll have that appetite suppressant and start burning so, fat. Karen, you said induction there. Can you uh, define what you mean by that? Induction, that's when you're making the switch from being a primarily sugar burner to being a fat burning machine. How long does so, that take? Uh, not very long, usually just a couple of weeks and then you're, you're going along quite smoothly. So I like to say for the, the total carbs, the 20 grams, uh, two to four weeks for most people. So just stick to those total carbs for the first month. Cool. Okay, so now I've calculated my macros. I kind of have a, a range of what my calories should be. I know how much protein I need to get in every day. And I, I yeah. sort of have some uh, boundaries on how much fat I should be eating. Yeah, so you need a food scale. Otherwise, you won't know exactly what you're eating. Mm -hmm. um, there are very simple ones you can get. You can order them online. You can get them at Walmart. Uh, I have a, just a simple, you know, star fruit one. You want an electronic one. All you have to do is you put your plate on there, you hit zero, and then you measure your food. So you would measure that piece of chicken mm -hmm. and then just plug into a food diary, an online food diary, like MyFitnessPal. Uh, there are a few other ones that are our users, our members from the, uh, from the Facebook group use. So we're, we're right now we're looking at my fitness pal. If you're watching this on YouTube, so all you have to do is you just plug in the food and it tells you how many calories, how many grams of carbohydrate, how many grams of fat, how many grams of protein. And then you can figure out from there what else you should be eating for the rest of your meals. Yep. It totals it up for you. You don't even have to add. All you have to do is just count up to 20. <laughs> All right, so I've got my food diary where I'm going to keep track of all my food. I've got my scale and my measuring spoon mm -hmm. so that I can keep track of how much uh, nutrients I'm putting into my face. Well, yeah. How do I keep track of how my body is uh, adjusting to this new diet? Well, when you first start, uh, 
the scale does tell you a few things. It doesn't tell you everything, but it does give you a starting point. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now, a lot of people do find, particularly with this diet, because they're not losing a lot of muscle while they're losing their body fat, they find it very useful to take measurements just with a simple soft tape measure, measure around the waist. Uh, some people like to measure around their arms, their thighs, their neck for men. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, that'll keep you on track, especially on uh, the weeks where the scale isn't moving. Sometimes, particularly with this diet, the scale might not move that much or it might not move at all. And then you find, though, that week you've lost an inch off of your waist. So you're still burning fat. Right. You're just, you're just not seeing it on the scale. Right. We call that body recomposition. It's something that's very common in our diet. And it's why uh, we're telling you as a, as a newbie, go ahead and get your tape measure and your scale. Because if you just use the scale, you're going to be disappointed when it's not changing. Meanwhile, you'll be knocking new notches in your belt trying to keep <laughs> your pants on. It's very true. So yeah, just those few things you want to get the macro calculator done, the online food diary, and then your food scale, and then measure your body. Now those things, especially keeping track of your macros in the food diaries, it can be tricky, and that is the most annoying part of this diet, but having a little bit of discipline and a little bit of precision, that is what is going to make everything so easy for you in the long run. By the end of the month, you won't have that surging appetite that you had when you were following the standard American diet of high carbohydrates and low fat. So it's, it's a little bit of a trade-off, but that is what makes this worth it in the long run. Now, Karen, I've heard a lot of people talk about uh, ketogenic diets as being, uh, you know, all you can eat meat buffets. Uh, what if that's the approach that sounds right to me and I, I'm going to have nine cheeseburgers every day with uh, sticks of butter <laughs> on a stick? It's not an all-you-can-eat uh, meat buffet. It is an adequate protein diet. It's high-fat, adequate protein. So <laughs> you're not going to want to eat nine cheese. There's nobody who really wants to eat nine cheeseburgers unless they're primarily burning sugar as fuel because their appetite is out of control. Your appetite will be reined in. You might only even want to eat twice a day instead of three times a day with all the snacks that you would have if you were following your, your traditional high-carb, low-fat, calorie restriction diet. Yes, and I, I want to add on top of that that you are going to have to deal with an interesting piece, which is if you choose not to do those measurements, you're going to be in a strange place. And, mm -hmm. and that is a place of not knowing exactly what's going on with your nutrients, which means you're not going to get the full benefits of some of the gimmicks and hormonal manipulations that you get from this diet. So I, we certainly understand that this is a lot more work to do these measurements, but it's this is based on our recommendation and experience of how to make the process very easy for you. Uh, the whole reason to do the ketogenic diet is this appetite suppression. And that comes from two pieces. It comes from a smooth hormone manipulation and l consistently low blood sugars. If you're not measuring, things can get out of whack very quickly. And you'll start to have those hunger cravings. You'll start to have those energy cycles of, uh, you know, being tired in the afternoon uh, instead of getting that boost of energy that many people get on a ketogenic diet. Yeah. Okay. So uh, with that, let me dovetail into a little bit of the health stuff. All right. If you have a metabolic disorder such as diabetes, which is why a lot of you are here, or if you have uh, any other health conditions such as uh, high blood pressure, your medication will need to be adjusted, especially if you're diabetic. Uh, you will need profound changes to your insulin levels and your any oral medications you're on will need adjustment. 
do do not just start eating low carb diets without uh, talking to your doctor to make sure that you have a good understanding of how your prescription medication is going to need to be altered. We've also found that with high blood pressure medication, a, a lot of those medications need an adjustment as well. And uh, in the long term, we've often seen that people's uh, blood pressure issues will resolve on a ketogenic diet because you don't have the yo-yo from the carbohydrates. But that's kind of between you and your doctor to work out how, what that's going to look like. So just be careful on that. If you have any weird uh, medical conditions, just talk to your doctor. This is a profound change in your metabolism. This is not just, oh, I'm eating a little bit differently. We're going down to the actual cellular level and we're reprogramming each cell in your body to use a different energy substrate than sugar. You are literally being rebooted from being a sugar burning machine to being a fat burning machine. And that is a non-trivial undertaking. And if you have medical challenges, you need to make sure that your medical care team is a piece of that. Yeah. All right. Well, with that, uh, I think we've covered most of uh, what goes on with the uh, ketogenic diet. Karen, is there anything else that you wanted to add? No, I think we're good, Ben. I think we, we covered everything just a little bit. Now there right. are, yeah, we do have other other podcasts where we go into these things a, a little bit more into depth, a lot more into depth. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think we touched on everything that you need to know just to get started. Yeah, this was really designed to be an orientation. That you've now uh, got a, a, a spoonful of keto on each one of these different things. Uh, if you have questions about macros, uh, Karen and I did an hour long podcast on macros. If, if you want to know about details about shopping trips and recipes, Karen and I did an hour and a half on very detailed, you know, okay, mm -hmm. we're in the produce section. Here's what we're thinking. Here's how it incorporates in our meal plans. Uh, those are all things that will help benefit you. But I want to caution you. This is a very technical diet and it has a lot of scientific nuance. The rabbit hole goes deep. <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> Don't overthink this diet. It, it really is as simple. No sugar, no grains, no carbs. Just yeah. fo focus on meats, veggies, a little bit of dairy. You'll be yeah. fine. There, there are a lot of weird nuances with, you know, special artificial sweeteners and can I use inulin fiber and can <laughs> I make uh, mug cakes out of almond flour? Mm -hmm. Don't worry about that stuff in the first couple of weeks. Just focus on the real basic stuff. Make meat and veg and you'll be fine. And then as you become more proficient with your keto kung fu, you start adding in some of these things and you'll continue to research and learn more. It, it's real easy to get overwhelmed on this diet because there are 19 nuances it's not important. If you can get your carbs down below 20, you will go into ketosis. You don't need yeah. any measurements. You don't need sticks or blood measurements or any of that stuff. All, all you got to do is track your food, weigh your food, measure your food, below 20 carbs, you're in, you're good. Now, you don't need a PhD to start. You just need to start and be able to count to 20 and learn as you go. Uh, learn as much or as little as you want. That, that's a great point, Karen. Uh, you're going to have questions along the way. That's why Karen and I are, are here. We are uh, members of a group on Facebook called the Ketogenic Open. The, the, what is the actual name of that thing? <laughs> Ketogenic, ketogenic diet open discussion. Open discussion. Yeah. yeah, ketogenic diet open discussion. It is a so, bit of a mouthful. <laughs> I know. Yeah, who named that thing? <laughs> so... You can go into Facebook and, and just join this as a group. And it's a group of 12,000 people. And it's actually 22,000 people because we also have a group that's focused on uh, special low-carb recipes. Yeah. And the name of that group is equally... Keto Plus. Keto it's, Plus. It's Keto Plus. all about it's the food. The food. <laughs> that's right. So you can join both of those groups and get all kinds of neat recipes and meal ideas on how to, you know, stuff to eat for breakfast you know, some of these weird stuff. Uh, right now I'm looking at a uh, delicious peanut butter uh, cake that who somebody made, figured out. How to make. I don't know. Madness making bread out of peanut butter. <laughs>
any tricks and we'll be happy to share with you. And these are people who are along these uh, journeys with you that there's going to be trouble. It's you're going to run into questions and that's what a support group is all about. So we really encourage you to add that tool to your arsenal of making sure that this diet is a success for you. All right. Well, Karen, we're going to wrap it up with that. Sounds good. No one in this podcast is a provider of healthcare, and our discussion is based on things we read on the internet. It's not our intent to render medical advice for your unique situation. Only you and your doctor can make decisions regarding your medical treatment, diagnosis, and especially the impact of prescription medication. Always check with your prescribing doctor on the compatibility of your medication before undertaking any change in nutritional approach or fasting protocol. Many medications are known to be incompatible with longer fasting without adjustment. Be safe and don't trust our workforce.